news. We're the young guns. We're the ones that they told you to run from. Yeah, the player's gonna play and a hater's gonna hate. And a regulator's born to regulate. When it all hits the fan and it all goes down and the gloves come off, you're gonna find out just who we are. We're doing our talking, walk that walk, wide open rocking, that's how we roll. Our backs to the wall, a band of brothers, together alone, the Outsiders. The Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, Andrew Richter, deep in the bowels of our underground lair, declaring our own autonomous zone where we can cuff them and stuff them. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> cuff them and stuff them. <laughs> Jason Bradley, the suffering of Succotash. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's, your, that's your new nickname. I like it. I like Cuff it. Cuff and stuff. I have heard that song. Yeah. Where have I heard that song? Wow. Jay, I, I, it, it is not coming to me, although I do have a, a music-related thing here to open up with. Yeah. But... Uh, the Outsiders. Mm -hmm. Is that what that's called? Yes. Okay, well, Tom Cruise and Patrick Swayze and... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Pony Boy. Yeah. Was, that, was that song on the movie? No. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> Ralph Macchio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Ralph Macchio, by the way, in Karate Kid 3, was about 41 years old. Just yeah, just I like, just watched that the that other day. That is awful. That, oh, it was awful. It wasn't that good. I like two. That's my favorite. Out of the really? Uh, yeah. It would be if Elizabeth Shue was in it again, but well. yeah, she's not in that one, so I have to go with one. Okay. So, But I do like the first two, but holy cow, is the third one bad. Yeah. I mean, the story wasn't bad. The, the idea that uh, the guy he plays, uh, yeah. uh, Daniel LaRusso, yeah. like he's in high school for eight years. It's like... It's like my wife uh -huh. and I just started watching 13 Reasons Why, the new season yeah. on Flixnet. And that is, they have been in high school literally for mm -hmm. like 11 years now. <laughs> I mean, in season one, I think they were seniors, and they're still seniors. Yeah, well. <laughs> so a lot happens. In yeah. well, Beverly Hills, I mean, how old was Luke Perry when he got his graduation? He was like 29. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the answer. Okay. Give, give it up here. Eric Church. Eric Church. I've heard of him. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of a deviation. He's a country guy, but he's also kind of a rock guy. So uh, he kind of brings the most, best of both worlds in together. So. Quite frankly, that's kind of what, like I told you, I like Dwight Yankum. And he right. was like a bluesy <laughs> country guy. And uh, unique sound. I agree yeah. with Eric Church on that completely. He does have sort of a, a difference to him. And I, I do yeah. like that, people who can carve out a niche mm -hmm. and, and kind of get, get that. Now, Jay, I, I want to say something, too. Yes. I heard some music earlier this week. I had a mix going in my YouTube. Yeah. And I got some 90s stuff going. Ooh. Okay, which, and I like a lot of different things. I don't know the artists very well. And, you know, that one tune is kind of what I call them all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, heard, I heard some songs... Uh, in particular, that um, I I cannot understand the words to. Oh, and okay. just just that's most of them. Stick with me on okay. this, okay? Stick with okay. me. Okay. Now I think the song that set the standard for not understanding was La Bamba. Well, <laughs> now was okay, Richie that's Valens Spanish. the was right, but that's not, that's the problem though. <laughs> you, I can't understand it. Here I thought you were going with like Nirvana or Pearl Jam. No, you're going with something <laughs> in a different language. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I don't get it. What <laughs> what, what, what are they saying? <laughs> No, was Richie Valens the first one that sang La Bamba? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's. So, that's what year would that have been? The late fifties? Uh, what year? Goodness. What What year did they? I don't know. Yeah, fifty eight like or something that they passed away uh, could, with uh, Buddy Holly and uh, that other guy, Big the Bopper. Yeah, yeah, the Chantilly Lace guy. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say it's fifty nine that they died. I'm usually good with dates. Hmm. February third, nineteen fifty nine. Um, but. I heard a few songs, and maybe that's it. Maybe they're in a different language. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> but what, but yet, yes, there are songs I don't uh, understand. February 3rd, 1959. Hey, I was yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there are songs like uh, <laughs> one song they came up was, uh, what was that one that had a dance to it? Uh, 
Macarena. Mar- margarita. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just going, there's whole parts in it where I'm just, I, what are they saying? Yeah, that's what it is. It's La Bamba. La 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 Bamba. You just hum it. But yeah, the margarita, it's like there's whole sections where I'm just like, what are they saying? Everybody's oh, dancing to it, boy. you know, or whatever, and then, you know. <laughs> Never done it. I, I refuse. Really? I refuse. I'm, uh, not, there's a few, I'm not a conformist. A few either. wedding receptions I've gotten a little out of hand, and that's about it. Yeah. I <clears throat> and I'll tell you another song yes. came up. Yes. This this was a, I don't think this is. But a, yes, that's one in, that, that's in another language as well. So oh, okay. That's also in Spanish. Um, I think. Uh, is, I, is hey Spanish for hey? I don't know. Hey, Spanish. hey, Spanish for hey. I, I, I know H-A-Y a little, for I, H-E-Y. I know a little Spanish. I don't. I only know, know the baño and the, when I was in, uh, when I was yeah. in, uh, where was I? What's that city right across the border? Tijuana. Tijuana, yeah. Oh boy. I had the baño and then uh, yeah. that's where I told the story, I think, of the, of the, um, I was in the bathroom and uh, the guys were in there, uh, Literally talking about yeah. killing somebody. Oh boy! They were you know tired of yeah. you know escuchoing to his obloing or something. I couldn't make out everything. <laughs> but but El, El Muerte. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. That yeah. one. Muchacho was gonna get. Uh, was gonna get. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know a little bit more now uh, to the point where I was able to tell a mother <laughs> off for having her kids swear I get the park around my kid. Oh well. But, hey. uh, so a little bit, but you know uh, what? Las palabras. Uh, I forget now. I it's need the while, I need but, the Spanish for dummies. But yes, uh, tu eres un baño. You are the bathroom. I used to say that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. I you know, come to think of it, I remember one time a friend of mine had a a one of those exchange people come there, and yeah. I remember I said I tried to talk to him in Spanish, yeah. and I don't know how bad I butchered it. Yeah. But this guy could stop laughing every time he saw me. <laughs> I was just say, wow. hey, did you, uh, did, uh, don't they, the, <laughs> whatever I said. <laughs> hey, did you, don they, really? I think I spoke, I think it was like, it was like the margarita. I spoke like uh, half in English and half in Spanish. Oh and I think it was just, that, that's uh, not, now, now, let yes. me tell you, have you ever heard, you probably have. I heard this song. I had no. not heard it since I was in high school. There's this guy, this white guy, who was like a rapper. Snow. Have you oh, ever yeah. heard him? Yeah. Okay, now what's that one song that he sings? Oh, Informant? Goodness. Yes. Okay, uh, tell me a word in that except that. I, it's been so many years since I've heard it. I mean, it's just that's all I hear. It's been so many years since I've heard it. I, I yeah, I don't know. But that, and again, rap was never really my thing. Well, I, I, hip hop maybe early hip hop right. you could call it that. But I mean, I I couldn't understand a word of it. Now I kind of like the beat of it. Okay. But it was like gibberish. Other than that, <laughs> there's even there's even yeah. a a YouTube with the lyrics, and I still don't understand it. <laughs> Well, see, and I thought it's interesting to have you know Eminem is create is is often um, I don't mean the candy here is often credited with being Mr. White Rapper, but you had this guy, you had the other guy, yeah. uh, what's his name, uh, Marky Ice Cream Mark, Cone, or, uh, yeah, uh, is that right, Ice Cream Cone or no. Ice Ice? What was his name? Yeah, Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vanilla. I knew it was some sort of ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, who's Marky Mark? Uh, I thought that was a whiskey. No, that's uh, Mark Wahlberg. Oh, so he's he remember that uh, in the Mark Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. You, you don't oh well, that, that? kind of what did they sing? I don't know. I didn't oh, listen okay. to that kind of music. You did too. You had a T-shirt. Oh, you no, had you, not you had that. you had posters on your wall. Not that. <laughs> so that's your challenge. Tell me, tell me what he says other than informant. I I don't. I, like I say, I haven't heard it in years. I have no idea. So, well, I mean, I, I have to say it's it's yeah. not it's not a bad song. I just don't. I just how am I supposed to sing along in the car? Whoops! Whoop, 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 whoop. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, how am I supposed to you know sing along in the car when I'm driving if I don't know what what they're saying? I don't know. Oh, come on, that's not bad. Five O running up in the block. 
The police are coming. Oh, through. is that what he said? Yeah. You don't speak the language of the streets very well, Andrew. Okay, what are yes. you making up? Um, I always thought it was a licky boom boom yeah. That's probably not right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll give you that one. Not Another very, guy even not has very glasses. Coherent. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Not very coherent. Okay. I'll give you that one. All right, so I got one. So yeah. you don't have a song. Do you have a song where you can't really understand the words that you love? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, probably, you know, I understand them now. But, I mean, like, the whole Nirvana Nevermind album, I mean, you don't understand almost anything on that album unless you've looked up the lyrics. Now, now what songs? I, I know some Nirvana songs. Yeah, what, what well, songs? it smells like Teen Spirit, the first single they had. I mean, it... It's yeah, like, I, uh, what about, uh, like, Come As You Were? Yeah, Come That's As You there? Are, yeah. So I remember them doing that on Unplugged, because yeah. that was a big show in the 90s on MTV. That one's maybe a little more understandable. Okay. Um, trying to think. I'm so horny, that's okay. Is that the same song? Mm, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I, I, I used to always what? laugh at that part. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah. yeah do, 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 or whatever. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of my friends are into that alternative stuff. Some of it's all right. Um, In Pearl Jam, there were issues with, with understanding some of that, you know, and... I only know their first two couple albums. I don't yeah. know anything after that. But through some album started with a V. I remember I had verses. No. Okay. That was a that vitology. Was the oh, was vitology. That? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ten. Was that another one? Yeah, that oh, was okay. our first one. Okay. Then I I remember that. That's like ninety two ish. Yeah. When you know alternative started to become what pop was in mm -hmm. the eighties. Uh, you know. So, but I mean. Yeah, there's there's all these songs. I, I sing them in my head, and I'm like, what the hell? What the hell are the words? <laughs> I, I can't even describe it. It's like some of the most simple things, and right. I don't know the words to it. Right. Well, and and sometimes my mishearing lyrics, the ones that I mishear, I like better than what's written, and I use that and make my own song out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's a good line, and I can take that because that's not what you he used. You avoid the copyrights. Right, exactly. To, that's yeah. not what he said at all. That's awesome. I can take that. Yeah, well, you know, and I'll tell you what. Um, it was just, you know, it's... it's. Uh, by the way, yeah. Van uh, what was his name? Ice Cream? Vanilla Ice. Vanilla yeah. Ice. Doesn't that song, Ice Baby or something, he sings that, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound like that Queen song? Exactly, yeah. So what... How did that... That was called sampling, yeah, and they, that, that was... Under big, pressure, isn't yeah. that what it is? That's the one, yeah. So how did he get away with... I know you with... don't get any points for that. No, no, okay, no, but I mean, okay. how did he get away yeah. with using their... You know, like like Michael Jackson bought a lot of Paul McCartney stuff. Right, and he, one... he received the royalties on, like, sales of Beatles stuff because he owned the rights to it. Um, with sampling, I mean, you're looking at just, like, a short piece of music so there's that a you short, repeat over and over and So over there's over. a short amount that you can legally take without... Well, I mean, there were a lot of battles over that. Or what's legal, what's not legal, you know. And, and Well, and, you could be Millie Vanilli and never sing anything. Right. Well, I, I mean, at least it was all original. It just I wasn't know. them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was somebody else. It's like the par original Partridge family. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's interesting to know. We'll have to. We'll have to. Yeah, there were there were a lot of songs back in that era, and I, I would say it's probably to a lesser degree today because you got a lot of producers and rap that make their own beats and whatever, and you know, and so people buy those and they or they hire a producer to make those for them. Now uh, is my understanding of it, but back in that time, it was just sampling, and and I think it kind of came out of like you had DJs that would like scratch on records and and play like loops of things where, uh, you know, they had actual wax records that they were doing that with. And that was kind of the genesis of DJing today, where you have people playing songs and then slowing things down and, you know. Like uh, DJ Spooky? Yeah, yeah, that kind of <laughs> stuff. All the ele uh, electronic, uh, you know, uh, was kind of born out of that part of, of that uh, genre. Huh. Uh, so, yeah. The things I learn every day. So you can't understand Nirvana, and I can't understand snow. <laughs> so 
stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, the La Bamba and the Margarita are in different languages, just so you know. That. Oh, they are? Okay. Yeah, well, that's what I've been told as of oh. five minutes ago. Okay. Because I didn't understand Oh, oh you mean not different from each other, different from ours. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, so okay. they're... Different that's from a, English. Yeah, they're in German or something. Yes. I don't know what they're in, so... <laughs> That, that's what I said. Okay, so so a bunch Hindi. of yeah. bunch of songs I didn't I didn't know the lyrics to there. So yes. all right, now Jay, on to serious business here. Yeah. Last week we talked about defunding the police, and we're going to continue that conversation this week. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Th- it's almost all that anyone's been talking about for the last week. Yeah, and I'm gonna throw a wild card into this to start because I think defunding the police is is. I don't think that's really what is even going to happen in Minneapolis. I've changed my mind. Yeah. Law enforcement. And I'm not trying to make this overly partisan here because there's plenty to criticize all around Mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Law enforcement, however, is one of the... If you look at what the left controls in this country, whether that's entertainment, whether that's academia, they've really taken over the Pentagon in a lot of ways, too, the State Department... Uh, They've taken over historical societies, uh, radio stations, authorships, um, Mm -hmm. uh, many, many things like that. There's a few things they still don't control, and you can tell because of how they lash out at them. Yes. One are churches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, some churches. Exactly. I think they've (laughs) infiltrated. If you can't beat them, join them. Um, But one of the big ones they don't have control over is law enforcement. Right. I mean... There's, certain, there's some things like, you know, sheriffs that are elected and all that where they've tried to run people. And, yeah. <clears throat> um, but law enforcement remains a big thing, and maybe the military also, that they don't really control. Mm-hmm. So I don't know that this is about eliminating. I think it's about eliminating police as we know it, mm-hmm. but we're not going to have no force out there. It's just going to be the touchy-feely uh, unarmed mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know Flower uh, pot Club like we talked about last yeah, week. Yeah, I mean that's what it's going to be. They, yeah. they want control over it. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, I mean if you look at Minneapolis, what other than the police department does the left not completely control there? Right. I mean everything they completely control. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost unchallenged. It's almost the only way they get challenged if, is if they're not radical enough. Right. So is that really what's going on here? I mean, I, to me, I see it as, as more um, they're going to use this, just the way they use gun uh, stuff, the, anything like that. They're attacking the police union, which is very strange. Mm-hmm. I mean... Oh, the union is defending their officers. Well, yes, and that I'm not saying that I agree with them. Right. But what I'm saying is they have an obligation to all the police officers to make sure there's due process and to make sure that there's, um, you know, that everybody's treated fairly yeah. and equally. If they don't stick up for the police officers, nobody will. When 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 a teacher gets fired, nobody has a problem with the with the the uh, head of the union. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, trying to defend them or plead their case or, I mean, they don't have much of one in this case, but I mean, you know, still that's why you join a union to have that if you choose and it's not my favorite thing, but that's neither here nor there. I'm the son and grandson of a teamster, okay? But, you know, so, I mean, control, I mean, in fact, the police chief in Minneapolis has backed out of union mm-hmm. negotiations as a leverage yes. ploy to try to force, you know, uh, or or create time, I think, to try to force a lot of this down everyone's throat. And I, you know, police are, you don't retrain them. It's like a it's like a ten year old dog. You don't retrain them overnight. Here, I mean, what right. is that really the ultimate thing? I think that people get that they have to have some sort of law enforcement, is this a way to take down traditional law enforcement and remake it in some, some woke, uh, uh, you know, uh, community organizer kind of thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what it is. Cause most normal people are 
completely it, on board with law enforcement. They don't like it when it goes over the top, like in this George Floyd case. Chauvin should have been kicked out of the force years ago. Yeah, and that's something that I think we'll find out a little bit more of as the time mm-hmm. goes by. Uh, again, it's easy to Monday morning quarterback that. Right. It's kind of like, well, we should have gotten rid of this teacher, you know, 10 yeah. graduations ago. And it always it always seems to take that one more thing or two more things to yeah. actually get rid of somebody. You know, it just seems like an offense here and there kind of is mm-hmm. washed under the rug after a while. Um but no, you have a legitimate point there. And but again, I, I will point out the city and the police union have negotiated a lot of that. Here are the steps. You know, here's an officer's rights, here's an officer's due process. Uh there has to be the presumption of innocence in a lot of this too. Um you can't just be guilty because, you know, somebody files a complaint against you. That could be Mm-hmm. It could be BS for all we know, or an exaggeration. And I don't like that. I don't like it when when that's brought up because um, I think you're going to be hard pressed to find an officer who hasn't pissed somebody off in the 30 years or so <laughs> they've been on the. Fo- I mean, their job is right. to basically ruin somebody's day. I mean, I'm sorry. I I don't yeah. I, I don't mean it like that, but. Their job is to catch people breaking the law, and people don't like to be caught. Right. So, you know. Now, granted, again, there are times where, you know, I think sometimes speed traps are Yeah, unnecessary. I think their tactics can be called into question for sure. The Roscoe standing there with the hair dryer. Yeah. <laughs> trying to catch somebody. Yeah. Cut yeah. And stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, their tactics can be called into question, and you and I have done that on yes. Previous podcasts and on blog posts, I mean, um, especially the holiday ones, which really bother me, trying mm-hmm. to nail somebody coming home from the cabin. I mean, that's really not protecting the public. No. It's not serving the public. There are things about the police that piss me off. Uh, yeah. they, there are. Um, I think they selectively enforce the law sometimes. It bothers me, too. Um, but also, you know, some of that is not... Uh, but again, you know, you look at somebody's record, and I, my whole point is, you just you're going to find some, hey, this guy's a jerk, or hey, this guy yelled at me, or this guy handcuffed me when I, you know, shouldn't have been, or said I did. I mean, I, there's going to be a lot of that. He said, she said stuff in there, and how do you weigh that? I mean, how do you weigh what's a fireable offense? And so a lot of that, like I said, has been negotiated. Yeah, you know, it, it isn't a one size fits all thing every community is different every police force is different every you know crime statistics and stuff like that are different everywhere so i mean i think that you know how do you uh, how do you evaluate that i think is is open for debate yeah but you know uh so we're gonna have we're gonna have what we're gonna have the the uh flower pot club like we said we're gonna have them come in and negotiate uh, uh, somebody's robbing my house and and uh, they're going to come over and sit everybody down and live okay you can only take this right because you're disadvantaged you know I mean it was, it was, is that where we're heading I mean what what I mean it's almost like the people on the the city council in Minneapolis don't care I don't believe they just don't care what the place is I think they do. I think they do. I think they do. I mean, but if they care, you'd think it out. You'd, uh, or have they been plotting this for so long some that of them it's just have the been. opportunity? Some of them have been, and I think they're not ready to roll it out yet. I think that this caught them by surprise. It's like, oh my word, we have this opportunity now. Go, 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 go. And they weren't ready to roll this out yet. Because you have a bunch of radicals on this Minneapolis City Council. I mean, again, you know, look at who they have on there. Uh, yeah. you don't, don't even look it up. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, the president, Lisa Bender, when, when she's saying things like, yeah. uh, you know, when you call 911 and a police officer comes to your house, that's your privilege. You know? Yeah, exactly. What? No. Everybody deserves to have the police show up when they call 911. That, that, that's not privilege. That is their responsibility. 
You know, and yeah, when you live in a big city like Minneapolis and there's lots of things going on all the time, maybe they can't get everywhere they need to as quickly as possible. And maybe that's true in smaller places, too, where they have fewer police officers. I, I, I don't know. But these people are so radical. And but but uh, hold on. Yes. Show me the evidence that if a minority calls 911, the police don't respond as quick. Right. And if a, a, a white person does, they respond quicker. Yeah, Again, I don't think there's evidence to that. So, I mean, but see, that's the whole problem is they're feeding off that perception. There's no facts that back that up. But they're, they're almost inciting. Mm-hmm. So, oh, oh, well, you, you're black. Well, they, they really don't care. Right. You no, know, they just don't. You know, you're 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 Asian, which I mean, I, I, I I'm, I'm I'm still I'm lost as to how you know I've seen people. You know, my wife's a nurse. I've seen people come into hospitals and people come into. I have never seen anybody treated any way based on race. Mm-hmm. I've seen first responders mm-hmm. bringing people in, and yeah. there's not a discussion about oh hey this guy's black here back in the corner make sure he's last what. I mean, our our, our uh, uh, surgical hospitals in World War II in Korea and all that treated enemy soldiers, mm-hmm. saved some of their lives. Yep. Okay. So if you want evidence, that people are, you know, treated equally here. I mean, look if you if you want to find bias. Anywhere, if you look, it's almost like it's this. there. There are racists. Yeah, but but it's almost like the premise is: if you look hard enough, mm-hmm. you will find something. Yes, I mean that seems to be the premise. It's automatically assumed every white person is guilty. You know, I mean, which is just as racist, by the way. Mm-hmm. Now I interrupted you. What were you saying? Sorry. No, I said <laughs> what I was going to say. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay, I thought I I thought I jumped in like I always do. By the way. If you want in St. Paul, don't let St. Paul get frozen out of this either. either right. Here with Melvin Cata. But Melvin Cata will not be at this. We have a virtual town hall. Actually, it's going on right now. Mm. With, listen to this star studded lineup. I mean, here's an objective okay. group on what to do next Sandy Pappas. Oh, boy. Representative Carlos. Marcini, I, 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 you know, I butcher names, sorry. And your girlfriend, Rebecca Knocker. <laughs> sorry, I had to say that. And I guess her husband is going to show up, so Knockers will be there. <laughs> okay, so. So. So, so, sorry. so they, they had a <laughs> virtual town hall. There, now, there is, a, there is a diverse group of people. I mean, you couldn't get three people sharing one brain more than that. So that's that's a great group. Now, here's the thing. Are we going to start seeing first and second ring suburbs have these discussions next? Oh, you can guarantee it. I, I mean, we know the cities that we're talking about here, the cities St. we're Louis not Park, talking about. Okay. Golden Valley. I was going to mention Edina, names. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably. I mean... Anything bad, and, and they like to follow suit. Mm-hmm. Brooklyn Park. <laughs> New <Well>. Hope. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. New uh, Hope. We'll see. We'll see about New Hope. I was well, John Brown. Elder's been a police officer his whole life. He Absolutely. He has a different perspective. He probably has a different perspective because you have John Elder, uh, who actually you know is a spokesman for the Minneapolis police. Yeah. And, and then um, I was surprised. Uh, they were one of the... One of the cities that did not implement a curfew uh, when everybody else did. I thought they did. I don't think they did. I think, I think New Hope they, and Crystal stayed away from it. At Crystal least, uh, initially. I, yeah, I think they were. I think they did for that weekend and then lifted it right. Because oh. my wife works in New Hope, and I. Okay. I want to say that there was a night I came and got her, and had her follow me. With the night that things were starting to get boarded up, yeah. I was just like, "No, you're gonna." You're gonna follow me home. You know, it's not a long drive, but yeah. I just like, you're not gonna. No, you're not they were doing. boarding stuff up. I mean, I they still do. Yeah. I drove through Crystal a few days ago, and yeah. there's still stuff boarded up. But I don't know if those businesses are not there anymore. They just didn't want to be looting targets or what. But yeah. um, anyhow, Jay, the governor, and our our 
I hate calling her a lieutenant governor. The the idea that woman is the I mean Walls is bad enough. Yeah. The idea this woman is Governor Junior is next in line, or <laughs> or I, I just yeah. I find mind boggling. <clears throat> um, and all their merry people who who every time the governor has a press conference, it's. 11 people have to speak and all say the same thing and then they answer three questions and run out of there. Right. It's about as, um, you know, you know, it's just... The, anyhow, the legislature, as, as you and I predicted a few weeks ago, being called back into session, mm -hmm. um, we all know why. It's because of... Well, there's three reasons. I mean, obviously the emergency powers, which will clearly get extended. Walls wouldn't yeah. ask for them if he didn't know a predetermined outcome. Um... And then you have, although I'll be interested to see the House vote, because I think it will be close, but I think he has the votes. Yeah, uh, I do too. Yeah, I think they've given permission for a few DFLers. Okay, mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, he wouldn't ask for it. He's not going to ask for it and get it shot down. He's already, they've already counted heads, the Fonz and yep. uh, Hort, Hortmeyer. They've already, they've already, <laughs> they've already counted uh, uh, Melissa Horrible. Yes. They've already counted heads. They know they have the votes. Um, it doesn't matter what the Senate does. And the Senate, of course, the, of course, if, if, if the, I wonder if I wonder if it actually passed the House, mm -hmm. if the Republicans would actually have the guts to stop it. You know, they, they, they would actually like say it passed yeah. the House by two votes. Would the Republicans actually follow through in stopping the emergency? Well, they can't. Uh, both nope. houses. Right. But to... let's pretend that the House in a shocking vote. Oh, I see it. Decides to shoot walls down. Do you think yeah. that the you think they would at this point? I think so. Okay, yeah. I think so. Here's what I think is less likely: that it passes, and the Senate says, "Unless you rescind this, no bonding bill." The likelihood of that is zero. Yeah, you're getting that, a bonding. But bill. but that's there's a lot of pressure. For them to do just that, yeah. and, and but they're ignoring it. They're acting like people aren't saying it. But this, this is what your people want. No, well, on a bonding for, bill, and especially no on a bonding bill if he won't re rescind his emergency powers. Well, first of all, if I can speak a little bit for the Republican base, where I used to be a part of, they don't want any bonding bill at all. Mm -hmm. So the idea that anything would pass is probably unacceptable to about half that base. Yes. They don't want one, period. Absolutely. So, uh, but, again, I think one is going to pass. I think it will be the largest one in state history. I think Republicans who are not facing a primary challenger, who are in 65, 35 districts, know that they're not going to be held accountable for that ultimately in November. And you're going to see, like we said, there's a, it's between one and two now, one and two billion. Okay, right. so the Republicans can't go below one because they already passed it. Right. So you're gonna, and I say it's closer to, I'll say it's closer to the two because I think to get to the sixty percent, they've got to buy off five or six more people. And It'd be about one point seven five. Yeah, the only way they're gonna do that is all right. Hey, Bill. Hey, George. All right, all right. We'll put your your community college. We'll give them a thirty nine million dollar building that they don't need. If you'll if you'll vote with us, I mean that's what's going to ultimately again because right. the negotiations aren't in public like they should be. So and and you've got you've got the other reason is to do this police reform, which is going to affect every community mm -hmm. in the entire state, every sheriff's department, every hazard county that there is, and some interesting features on this. Now keep in mind, folks, this this information for us right now is about. Four hours old, right? <laughs> so I don't, yeah, the, the press conference was just today. Yeah, so. so I mean, I don't know how much, you know, what can you get done in a special session? I mean, Walls keeps saying we're going to stay there until it's well. You know what, Walls? Um, you don't decide when the legislature adjourns. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he can call it into session; they can adjourn five minutes later. I mean, there's, there's, he has nothing to make them do it. Right. Unfortunately, again, with the leadership there, we know that's not going to happen. They're going to. They could be there all summer, for all we know. Oh, well. It would not true. shock me if they were there for weeks and months. It would no. not. Because ultimately, you know, um, they're all going to want to come out of this saying they got something done. Mm -hmm. And personally, I think the less they do, the gooder. Now, right. look, we, we talked, too, about Here's another interesting aspect of this. Melissa Horrible 
was confronted with, well, do you support defunding the police? And of course, she didn't answer. Walls didn't answer. Whoever the lady is who beat out Tom Bach, I can't think of her name, doesn't matter. Oh, 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 it's a local issue. It's, it's yeah. not on us. But, right. Well, a week later, now everything is on them. A week later, now they're going to be in charge of all of us. Right. Well, I mean, and, and that's the governor's um, modus operandi, is to not say anything until he does it. Yeah, and, well, and that's been, what he did yeah. all the way through. I mean, he's Mr. Minnesota Nice. It's like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put turbulence into the waters. I'm not gonna show any intestinal fortitude. Yeah. I am not gonna say one way or the other. I'm just gonna do it. Then I'm not gonna answer questions about it. Just like with oh, the Christopher Columbus statue is safe. Hey, don't worry about it. Oh, what they're pulling it down right now. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I, yeah. Uh, then they then afterward they justify it. it. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, and I, I love the lieutenant governor's comments that, that now it's time to have a conversation about uh, these historical symbols. Maybe we should have talked yeah. before you started pulling stuff down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe that was the time for a conversation before you do it. But here, here it is, is that if, if you're offended by something, you have carte blanche, just go do what you want. Just go do it. I mean, that's, that's not how a, a, a republic works. No. You know, I mean... Uh, what do you mean? You could just, you know, we've let, again, if you're going to let the offended decide what offensive, what, what's offensive, we're going to have to tear down everything. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, hey, there's names I'm offended by, okay? Yeah. There's names I don't want to celebrate. But Absolutely. But it's not high on my list of priorities, okay? I'm just, <laughs> but every time something like this happens, these little groups continue to get power, and it's never enough. Yeah, you know, you're going to see names. We've already seen lakes renamed, statues torn down. You're going to see schools renamed. You're going to see, um, you know, buildings aren't going to have names at all. So airports will probably be renamed. Oh yeah. Um, you know, uh, ships. I mean, it's it's just a it's gotten loony. Yeah, it's gotten to the point where. They find something that they don't like, and they just go after it until people capitulate. You know, and you've got people like HBO that are taking Gone with the Wind off, even though the uh, name's escaping me at the moment. But uh, the African-American lady in in that film uh, won the first... She was the first African American lady to win an Oscar. Yes, but there's a Confederate flag in the movie. Yeah. Isn't the movie about the Civil War? Yeah. So why then is, I mean, that's like, that's like watching a Lincoln biography that mm-hmm. has Confederate soldiers in it needs to be censored now. Yeah, but, but I mean, and that's the thing, though. They just they go after everybody yeah, they, and anybody, and these groups just fold like a cheap suit, and they don't stand for anything. The corporate you know, ones and, really do. Oh, in fact, I, now it, that you bring that up, I saw an interview with uh, John Schneider, yeah. uh, Bo Duke. Yes. Was on, uh, and it might be on YouTube. In fact, I think it is. And um, the, the Confederate flag was being talked about yeah. by General Lee. And the Fo- Fox News host, and it was not one of their night, it wasn't Hannity, it wasn't Tucker Carlson, it yeah. was, I don't know who it was. It might have been their morning show, although I didn't see Steve Ducey on there, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, asked John Schneider if anyone has ever complained to him about the Confederate flag. In, in the, oh. Since 1979, the show was on the air. Right. And John Schneider said, I have never heard it once from the general public. It's always from a sponsor, a corporation, uh, an executive. Uh, it's always something like that yeah. that has an issue with it. You know, it, mm-hmm. it's always some group somewhere that, Nobody really knows who's... And I mean, I thought that was so... Un- Here's a guy who probably gets asked that question everywhere he goes. Yeah. You know, by the media. Mm-hmm. Not by people who love the show and want to see it in reruns or right. on Amazon or wherever. Some people like me have the DVDs. But, you know, point being that that where is this... It's almost like this groundswell is being cooked up somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, like it really isn't. There really isn't. It's like the perception is so much bigger than the reality. Right. Well, and and, and that's kind of the job of some of these groups. And I know. There we go. I'm gonna get. Let me hear. I'm gonna get death threats and hate mail. But it, you have 
you have groups like. But Jay, if if you want to find somebody who's offended about something, if you look hard enough, you'll find them. Right. <laughs> it's just, you right. Know. But but there's these groups that it's kind of their mission to find them and shut these voices down. Yeah. Anybody who opposes, anybody who's got a different idea, you shut them down. And if if they if they don't bend at first, you humiliate humiliate them and you make them bend. You know and. Again, I'm probably going to get death threats for this. But well, better you than me for yeah. once. Uh, you've got groups like Black Lives Matter. And yes, Black Lives Matter. I, I, yes, they do. Of course they do. Yes, they do. But that's but, not the mission of Black Lives that Matter. That group, Black Lives Matter, was founded on, on Marxist principles. Uh, they, they don't like the structure of the U.S. government, and they see it as oppressive even though or they're, capitalism. they're wrong, and capitalism as well, they do not like. Even if, even though, if you look at, if you look at minorities who mm-hmm. succeed, yes. capitalism is the reason for their right. success. I mean, I love Peggy Flanagan complaining about how uh, people don't have a chance if mm-hmm. they're minority. Well, she's a minority, and she's a lieutenant governor. Right. So, what do you mean you're oppressed? Yes. I mean. <laughs> Of course, nobody in our media thought to ask that. Right. But so, the, well, how'd you get here then? You know, how come right. you're not out? You know, how come you're not out spearing fish or picking cotton. Well, it's because you took a path that was somebody maybe opened a door, but you still went and did it. Mm-hmm. And then you're telling other people that they can't. I mean, what kind yeah. of a message is that? Right. Well, and, and like I was saying with these groups, especially, you know, like. Well, any of them, and whether it's Antifa on the white side or you know any of these groups that they, they, they are, they are Marxists or or anarchist uh, com- communists, and their goal is to overturn capital capitalism, overturn society the way it's been run for an, forever, and and to implement something different and to knock over anyone who stands in their way. They are radical. They. They use intimidation, they use uh, force, and they will do by whatever means necessary to achieve their goals. And you have all these businesses and these woke celebrities and everybody else who are giving money to these groups. I mean, it, you know, you, you see all these celebrities that had been giving money to, to get people out of jail when they got arrested. Uh, you know, we're going to pay for their bail. We're going to pay for lawyer fees. Well, you're paying for a lot of radicals' fees, and you're not paying for too many of just your general protesters. That well, let me ask this. Yeah. Let me ask this. Where are where are those celebrities for blacks and minorities who get pulled in for DWI or are laid on some child support payments? Where are those celebrities for them? Right. Where are those celebrities for you know a black person who needs a lawyer mm-hmm. who can't afford one? Right, just where on are a they? normal day. Yeah, exactly. You know, where are black people, where are, the, where are these celebrities for, you know, uh, you know, sponsoring black kids to go to college mm-hmm. or something like that or a program that they could become police officers themselves? Mm-hmm. Or, uh, you know, it, it's, it's like their, their focus is so off on mm-hmm. how to get, uh, because I, here's the thing. Obviously, I don't like those groups, Yeah. but that doesn't mean that I don't want minorities to be successful. I want them to be as successful as humanly possible. I do, too. And, I, but, I, people are people, and yeah, there's I, I no, want there's them no all benefit. to be successful. Yeah, there's no benefit to anybody to have people feeling hopeless yeah. or, or, or feeling like they're trapped. That's the last thing I want, whether you're mm-hmm. white, black, green, purple, orange. I don't care. Um, you have to have hope, and you have to have opportunity. Yes. You've got to have those things. But at the same time, opportunity requires the other side. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, right. Like, here, we say in Minnesota, and I know we're going off subject, but this is a good discussion. In Minnesota, you have the right to a free education on the taxpayer till you graduate high school. Mm-hmm. We give that to you. However, an education is earned mm-hmm. on the other side of it. Look, we'll cover the cost of it. Yep. We'll bus you there. We'll pay for your freaking lunch. Okay? I mean, true. It's yeah. all true. Yeah. But you have to go and earn that. You got to go meet us halfway and and um, 
you know, take advantage of that. Although you, that's getting to be less the case as well. Well, it is because it, it's still not producing results. We dumb things down, mm-hmm. and it's still not working. But, you know, and I think that's the wrong way to go, too. I think we need to aim high. But, um, but it requires, you know, an education is something you earn. It's not something you're given. And, um, but where is the emphasis on that? Where is the emphasis on look? Mm-hmm. Look at what we're giving you, okay? You can escape the ghetto. You can escape this if you, if you, we talked about it before. You don't join a gang. You don't do drugs. Yeah. You know, you don't have unprotected sex, that kind of stuff. And you get your education. That is the key. That's what I did. Okay. Yeah. That's what you did. Yeah. And we're, we have the most successful podcast in you. I mean, we out, we out, <laughs> our audience, like we said, is higher than the U.S. birth rate. Okay. So, I mean, uh, you know, the. the in numbers. Right, well, not yeah. in that Cheech and Chong kind of way. Oh, no, no, man. No, dude. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Blah. No. Uh, so, yes. I mean, that's, but that's, you know, I mean, I'd like to ask these black celebrities, um, you know, these football players that have college degrees and mm-hmm. things like, how'd you get here? Well, sometimes that's through a scholarship. True, but, but again. They earned that uh, through putting in tens of thousands of hours into their sport. Exactly. And having the academics to go with it. You can't get straight D minus. Look, I know athletes yeah. that I went to school with who thought they were going to get a free <laughs> ride, and I'm going to tell you something. They didn't get squat. Yeah. And by the way, there's other ways to get around that, too. There's some people who go to community college for two years. Mm-hmm. Then they go. There's football players and basketball players who do that and transfer. Uh, you know, again, obviously their talent helped them, but everybody has talent in yeah. some way, shape, or form. Right. You know, so how did, how did you black actors, how did you get there? You know what you did? You put countless hours in. Mm-hmm. You, you probably got told that you suck a few times and you didn't listen. A lot, I'm we sure. Get, we get told we suck all the time. And well, we, maybe you do. I do, definitely. Uh. But, I mean, <laughs> the, the formula for how you get there is there in front of you. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not through looting and, and destroying things. And calling people names. That's not how it, it works. But I want, to get to the, I want to get to this police reform thing. Yeah, I, I mean, let's do that. Because, I mean, we need to look at this. Because this is not just coming from, oh, some people over at the state capitol. Because we're seeing the same things pop up all across the country. And whether that is uh, over in Portland or Los Angeles or Seattle or over in New York. You just named a bunch or, of cities I don't like. Yeah, well, I don't like any of them. Like Thomas Jefferson said, cities are a cesspool. But, He's right. <laughs> but, you know, it, we, need to, we need to try and figure out where all this is coming from. And when you have... And I, I know people are going to roll their eyes, but you've got all these wealthy businessmen like George Soros who are giving tons of money to these groups like Antifa and Black Lives Matter. You've got uh, DoorDash who just gave a million dollars to Black Lives Matter. That you've Amazon, got, like you mentioned, yeah. Jeff Bezos, who does the same thing while he sits with his private security and his bodyguards and his, his mansion. So they want to sit and talk about AstroTurf, but yet they've been funding things like this all across the country, putting out policies that have been developed a long time ago yeah. in some shadowy back room. And this isn't conspiracy talk. I mean, these are proven things, that these people are giving money to these groups. And I think as, as our, yeah, our this goes Justice all the way, Department... This goes all the way back to the 60s radicals, if you want to be honest. Well, yeah, it. they're a lot of the ones funding a lot yeah. of this. Yeah, weathermen and all these underground things. I mean, you know, that, that stirred up a lot of the, the stuff back long before I was around. Right. And I read that in history books. Me too. <laughs> anyway, so the police accountability and reform legislative priorities... Why can't we come up with a one-word name for anything? Oh, you know, they all, it'll have another name. Don't worry. It'll be like the George Floyd Act or something like right. that. Because then nobody, everyone will be scared to vote against it. They're calling it the, why they just call it the Patriot Act? Well, right now. The Patriot got, Act of Minnesota. It's a catchy acronym. Parlp. Parlp? Parlp. It's kind of like Mavenschnup. You know what that is? What? That's all the planets. Oh. Mavenschnup, because I still consider Pluto a planet. Yes, so it's Maven- I do too. Mavenschnup. Yep. Once a planet, always a planet. Yeah, and by the way, if you look outside a little later tonight, believe it or not, you'll see Uranus. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> we gotta have a little fun here, okay? Right. I mean, we already did re- mention oh Rebecca goodness. Knocker twice, so I mean, right. make it three times. <laughs> hey, knockers, your table's ready. No, sorry. Okay, so use of force. Yes. Reform of the Keystone Statute that defines law enforcement. Blah blah blah. Using deadly. Fo- I mean, so let me ask a question here. So they say they're going to redefine the use of force, but they don't say how. Right. I mean, how would you change? Well, this is just a priority. Right, but how would you change what police right now? Obviously, they use deadly force as a last resort. Yeah. I mean, clearly, they do. But yep. I mean. How would you change that? You're going to exactly make- when you're in the middle of a heated situation, and let's say that you're with Perp, and uh, you know, Perp is waving a gun or has a knife out or something like that, and you got to all of a sudden go stop, guys. I got to go through my head now. Yeah, get out the handbook. Yeah, get out the handbook. Can, can and we see- use deadly force or can we not use deadly <laughs> force here? Well, in that it, line, it always can be debated. Uh, I understand that. Yeah. But you know, you you can't you can't expect a police officer, especially in like a hostage situation, yeah. or in you know somebody has a weapon and there's you know, you know the, somebody's robbing a bank yeah. and there's thirty people in there. I mean, how do you you can't stop and go okay okay let's call up Peggy Flanagan here yeah. and see if you know we're going to send in the the team of Jacob Fries who are going to go in there and community organize. I mean. There has to be, I get there has to be rules, and there has to be a mm-hmm. line. Absolutely. But I tell you what, if you make police so impotent, yes. you're going to end up with citizens with citizens getting needlessly killed. It's just like this. Uh, the NFL recently changed their rules about hitting the quarterback. When you can hit the quarterback, oh. how hard you can hit the quarterback. For 40 years. Right? Yeah. And, and so these... These guys on the defensive line and your cornerbacks are having to think the whole time about, okay, I gotta, I gotta get the quarterback, gotta get the quarterback, gotta get the quarterback. Oh wait, wait, wait! Can't hit him too high. Can't hit him too low. Oh, yeah, then the, then the hard. quarterback yeah. ducks yeah. and they get flagged for uh, <laughs> hitting in the and, head. And so the same thing is going to happen. You're going to have police officers that are trying to think this through in their head in the middle of a dangerous situation, and and somebody is going to get hurt. You're going to have a guy with a knife, a guy with a gun, that, well, they're trying to exercise discretion so they don't get in trouble, um, get killed themselves. Right, or innocent people will get killed. I right. mean, remember, police oh, officers too, are wearing bulletproof vests, right. and they're wearing, I mean, I'm not saying that, that they're not, uh, obviously they can get killed, they get killed, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But at least they have some protection, um, you know, if if a department store is getting robbed, yeah. you're in it. You're, you know. Well, and and that's the thing. I mean, we're taking something that was so cl- clear cut and black and white, and we're having to create these this new series of laws. When I can tell you for a fact, the only people that thought that the George Floyd thing was okay were the Ku Klux Klan, skinheads, and possibly uh, Derek Chauvin. Yeah. Everybody else on planet Earth knew that that was wrong. So, again, why does this need to be rewritten? It's kind of like there's a shooting with an illegal gun, so we're going to go make more guns illegal. Because that's what Democrats do. I mean, progressives are about creating new regulation and new, you know, government control. And it really that uh, all socialists are, are, you know taking government control of things when there's an open window to do so. Here, here is an alternatives to policing. Oh, boy. Now, how would this work? Create new models. Oh, God. Are we going to have the people from the U of M do this? <laughs> Create new models. Their models were amazing. Of ensuring public safety by. Yes. One. Creating a new office. Hey, more government. Mm-hmm. With DPS, the Department of Public Safety, to administer grants, free money, to community-based violence interveners and problem solvers, 
to intercept violence and reduce reduce interactions with law We're enforcement. We're going to sit around in a circle, and whoever has the talking stick gets to say stuff? Yeah, I guess so. I, How are you I going to... I think they've to, been sniffing the model glue. Uh, you know what I'd yeah. like to see? I'd like to see this this community-based violence intervention group. Why don't they go in and talk to uh, the mob for a while? You go sit down with them and negotiate yeah. something so it doesn't get to law enforcement. Right. Go sit down with Capone and Bugsy Siegel, whoever they are today. Right. Because we know it's still around. We know that racketeering and extortion and things mm-hmm. like that, they still go on. So you go, you go negotiate with them and figure out how law enforcement's not going to get involved in that. Yeah. Okay? So let's, let's laugh at that first. Funding. Oh, another taxpayer thing. A co-responder form of policing that pairs officers with a social worker oh. when responding to a crisis call and welfare Good checks. Word. Don't social workers already do that? I don't know that they go in with the police at the. Maybe I don't know. I've never at a welfare check. I mean, is oh, it a welfare check? Isn't yeah. the police the ones that do that though? I, I, good question. I thought they already all did that together. I mean, because because yeah. usually a welfare check is when a social worker has an issue, mm-hmm. isn't it? With hey, dad's not giving the kids back to mom this weekend, yeah. and or is that not a welfare check? A welfare check? check might just be. Checking up from time to time, period. On like an adopted Just, family yeah. or what? Yeah, okay. how's it going? Maybe I'm getting the mixed up. With but something a else crisis to... call? Really? You're going to put a social worker into a crisis call? Right. Is a call. social worker trained to do that? And, and you know, who's a, who's a social worker trained to side with, for one? We know that you know, I You're taking people that have a certain worldview and you're putting them into a crisis situation and if they ever get uh, the red flag laws for firearms, you're going to see these social workers begin to take firearms away from people that maybe they shouldn't be taken away from because they talked loud or they look scary. So or, it's, yeah. yeah. It'll go to for much more beyond what they're intended to do. Mm-hmm. Police oversight reform. Creates a robust framework. It's never a framework. It's a yeah. robust framework. Yes. Of accountability of law enforcement, which, of course, we already have through union negotiations. Expansion of the POST board and creation of the Police Community Relations Council. So, again, we got another government group being created here. Mm-hmm. Uh, reforming how arbitrations of termination of law enforcement are handled. In other words, trying to fire more cops, basically. Right, taking it out of the hands of the union and putting it into the hands of... Which is interesting. Maybe again. a city council, or I doubt it would be the police department. It would be, it would be probably the city. But the city shouldn't be an arbitrator. An arbitrator should be. should be independent. Yeah, should be. Here's my favorite one. Voting restoration. Remember, this oh. This is how we're going to deal with the police. Yeah. End the disenfranchisement of 50,000 Minnesotans, and I question that number, who are directly impacted by these issues. I think we're all directly impacted by the actions of police, personally. Yeah. Um, who are not serving a sentence in a prison facility... <clears throat> Who blah blah blah, you know, uh, must be provided with their right to vote, regardless of supervision status. So, oh. the day that you know a, an armed robber or a murderer mm-hmm. gets out of jail, a uh, voter registration card should be placed in their hands. So, in the police accountability and reform legislative priorities. <laughs> We're not talking about police accountability. We're talking about restoring voting rights to felons before they've proven themselves. Yeah. As long as they're not in prison, they can vote. That, that's well, what it's saying here. Right, and I'd like to say that I um, favor, generally speaking, restoring people's rights to vote when they have after a debt. certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there should be a time of not reoffending. Yep. I think there should be... Uh, you know, somebody should have to, I mean, and again, you'd have to demonstrate yeah. this or set a, a number of years or something like that. 
you know, you're off probation or something. But look, if you boosted a car when mm-hmm. you're 19 and you're now 40, uh, yeah, Absolutely. you should be you able should to be able vote. vote. But then you've got uh, like some of these stories we heard during the riots where some some people would get arrested and set free because they weren't holding anybody and arrested and set free three, four times a day. He could have voted three, four times that day. <laughs> yeah. But 50,000? I mean, I really That's, question that yeah. number. Are there really 50,000 50, felons, you know, living in this state well, without the right to vote? Right, because right keep in mind, I mean, it, it's not that. I mean, that's and, and why is it almost in a one, police accountability bill? Yeah, and that's almost one percent of Minnesotans. Yeah, again, this is more where they're just throwing junk in to get it passed that has nothing to do with holding police accountable. Yeah, I mean, uh, community healing, Jay. Mm. Oh. Create a grant program, yet another one, to fund professional community healers. How do you get through that without laughing? I, I don't. I, <laughs> that reminds me of that brother love, yeah. where the he, he cured the guy who could walk or could see. Yeah, remember that the guy no. could see. He was in a wheelchair with worn out tennis shoes. Yeah, and brother love said, "Be hailed." You know, did the best Robert Tilton right. he could, and after that. The person was healed. The person was blind. Mm-hmm. So they were healed. They could see. Awesome. So we're going to have a bunch of brother loves come around and heal paid people to walk around healers. as healers. Trained to respond to systemic oppression. You know what I'm going to do to these community Included healers? historic and present. So if, if uh, hold on now. So if, if you are, are just all out of sorts because of systemic oppression from, oh, the 1830s, <laughs> yeah. it, it, you need a community yeah. healer to come around. And Nat Turner, you're a descendant of Nat Turner, maybe? <laughs> um, yeah. You know what I'm going to do to these community healers? I'm going to grab a bow and arrow, <laughs> and I'm going to shoot every one of them in the Achilles. So they, <laughs> their Achilles heal. They can't <laughs> heal. <laughs> oh, my word. I don't even want to read the rest of this. Training expansion. I mean, really? Oh, and how about this? Independent prosecution and investigation. So we're going we're to create special rules. Once again, this is about taking it out of the hands of your local people who were yep. elected to prosecute this, and we're going to put somebody like Keith Ellison in charge of That's all of exactly this. That's exactly who we're putting in charge. Mm-hmm. Provide the AG with independent jurisdiction for the prosecution of police-involved deaths and create an independent investigation unit within the BCA for police-involved cases. Right, so we're going to get it out of the hands of the people we elect to prosecute criminals. Uh, the, the police are going to have no defense, basically, mm-hmm. because everything's going to be propped up and, and uh, you know, um, uh, taken to a different level here. Yeah. Training expansion. Mm-hmm. Expands in de-escalation and mental health crisis intervention. Mm. For who? Yeah. I, I think the I mental know. health crisis is often among the criminals. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, de-escalation training obviously is for police. They are uh, in de-escalation. That's all they do. The, the, the whole academy yeah. is the cadets. It's all they go through. Let me tell you something. One of the things that's hurt, though, is, and this was exposed in the Muhammad mm-hmm. Noor case, is, again, the push to have minority officers. Yes. You know, was, they, they, they should have flagged him in some of this mental health stuff, and I yeah. think they pushed him through because right. he was a minority. Look, and I'm, again, I'm okay for giving somebody an opportunity, but they have to be qualified to do it. So, yeah. I mean, are we going to have, are we going to have, you know, you're, you're, you do this, you're shrinking the pool of people who can be police officers, too. Mm-hmm. You know, you add requirements here and add things to this. Right. Well, I, I think what they're saying here, though, this is just for training in de-escalation and in mental health crises situations. Right. I'm going so, to go further, though. Yeah. Are they going to go after, and I, you know, I, there's companies that do this now. Are they going to go after police officers with certain political views? I mean, they could, although I mean, that would be a good portion of them. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, what's yeah. going on with Bob Kroll right now, too, mm-hmm. is is this movement to try to get him out of the head of the... Well, he was elected yes. to represent the officers. I mean, that's what he's doing. But mm-hmm. they don't like him because he's a Trump guy. Right. 
So, I mean, are we going to sit there? And I can't believe, and I bet, I bet somebody did this, as soon as this Chauvin guy, yeah. they were trying to figure out who he voted for. And, and oh, you know, yeah. there were uh, false pictures of him at a Trump rally, which he was not at. Right. But they tried to claim he was. You know, are we going to, I mean, are we going to, you know, get to the point where if he doesn't agree, if the officers don't agree with Black Lives Matter, that's a check arc against them? Well, that's where we're headed with everything else. I mean, look at the cancel culture and look at all the things that are being canceled or, you know, suspended or people who are being fired for the views that they're holding. Oh, it's happening every day. It's happening every day. It's a bigger and bigger list. People who are actually losing their jobs because they're not kowtowing, they're not bending the knee, they're not, you know. Yeah, in fact, in New Jersey, there was an uh, an anti-protest, mm-hmm. and a police officer, I can't remember the story, he got suspended for attending. Yeah. You know, I mean, but I mean, is that where we're at right now, that if I go to a, P, if I exercise my First Amendment rights, that my job is on the line? Yeah, and, and which I don't understand. It, it, your job should be based on what you do on the job. Yeah. There are some... There are some exemptions to that, or There's exceptions some that are more to important that, than others. where if you do something bad enough in public view, and it, it, but if you're just speaking your mind, I mean that really shouldn't. I mean, like, like that lady. Uh, did you see the video where she she was in Central Park or something like that, and there was a black guy that uh, he was just bird watching and uh he had said something about her dog because I, I forget what it was if she didn't clean up after it or whatever and she started screaming for help and all that and and she ended up losing her job because of it uh you know she's a terrible person obviously for doing that uh and it was wrong but how did that affect her at her work i, I i'm trying to understand i think i think I, the i think the fear is anything that goes viral yeah. Anything that leads the news mm-hmm. is going to eventually follow you forever. Yeah. Because that video is going to be following her for the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. Even though she obviously made a bad decision. She did. And acted stupidly. Absolutely she did. Um, should she be ostracized from earning a living? I know. She might be a parent. She might be, she might have a, a you know, a sick kid for yeah. all we know. I mean, um, she could have a sick yeah. mom or dad. And I mean, she she, she can't work yeah. at McDonald's uh, because l- last time I checked, I mean, all Americans, all human beings, really, but we are the ones who protect that here in America. You know, the right to life. You know, the, liberty, the liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Interesting word too that the framers use mm-hmm. to pursuit mm-hmm. of happiness, not achievement. Right, pursuit. Yes, you have the ability to to go try and do it. Yeah, but you're not guaranteed anything. Yeah. Are we done with this? Uh, we, we had one point at the bottom. Uh, warrior. The ultimate warrior yes. training. Warrior training and chokeholds prohibit. You know what this made me think of? There was a kid I used to go to school with, and, and I remember him one weekend. He was like, yeah, this weekend I was at Ninja Camp. Ninja Camp, huh? Oh, yeah, it's back in the woods in Wisconsin. You'll never find it. Now, that's what this made me think of. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never find it. Yes. <laughs> Go look at Google Maps. I bet you'll find it somehow now. <laughs> yeah. I th- I hear Ninja, and I think of that uh, Chris Farley movie. Yes. That's, that's all I American think of. American Ninja. Yeah, that's, that's all funny. I think of. So, but, yeah, so it prohibits the use of all restraints or holds by law enforcement that purposely restrict a person's airways or blood flow and ends the use of warrior-style training. So... I've been in a few bar fights in my life, yeah. and I have used a chokehold more than once. But the reason was that I was getting kicked, punched, scratched, bit. Yeah. So I decided to put somebody in a right. headlock. And, and, and I don't know if they need to do that with tasers and things like that. They might not need to. Maybe not. But again, what if somebody attacks you and I can't reach for my... Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, what if you? What if you're outnumbered? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean... Uh, your backup's not there yet. Right. I mean, there are a lot of scenarios where I could see where somebody is just trying to not get hurt. Right. And they're not trying to kill the other person, okay? But, you know, let me tell you something. 
somebody attacked me, mm-hmm. I'd put them in a sleeper pretty fast. <laughs> but I'm doing yeah. it. I mean, again, you're saying officers need to diffuse things. Yeah. Isn't that diffusing something? I mean, aren't I, aren't I you know, yeah. everything's simmering down when right. somebody's, uh, I don't want to say somebody's choking, mm-hmm. but I mean, um, you can't have it both right. ways. You can't diffuse a problem and take away people's abilities to do that. But, and warrior style training. I what mean, does that I, mean? I would think that they maybe cl- they should be trained in the martial arts better because, you know, uh, they teach not just how to punch and kick, but how to block and and things like that. And and it might give them another alternative when it comes to deflecting and diffusing things. That's a good uh, point. You know, because uh, you're you're trained to be defensive every bit as much as you're trained to be of offensive. Course. Yes. It's like driving. You're trained in defensive driving. Yeah. Not to be the aggressor, mm-hmm. but to be defensive. Right. Uh, but again, I just I just wonder if somebody's, you know, if somebody gets attacked by somebody, are they supposed to go, oh, okay, well, I can't use a chokehold. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't grab this. I can't put this person in a headlock. Yeah. They might be stabbing me, kicking me, punching me, biting me. Um, you yeah. know, cutting my toes off, but I can't put them in a chokehold. I mean, I mean, again, I, I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm trying to say that we have a bunch of politicians who want to write law about things they don't do. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and again, the line is always going to be debated. Yeah, you know, of of what steps over and what doesn't. So, I mean, um, well, now Jay, let me just say this. Because you know this is all going to get pushed tomorrow. Oh yeah, this this is a done that, deal. That's a bill, right that's a, there. It's a done deal. You know, I mean, we haven't seen the bill. This is a summary, but yeah, we'll see it after it's passed. Yeah. Um, and this is again going to I mean. Think about this too. All these grant programs and all of these. I mean, is is every city going to have to create a board of community? Yes. Jacob Fries. And and. You know, if this is being pushed at the state level, you're not going to just have Minneapolis. No. What, what size city is this going to be for? You're going to have to go find community organizers and and social workers at you know, but it's not or just, Minnesota. But it's not just police forces; at it's sheriff's Wadena, offices too. At you know, at, highway patrol. I mean, they're all law. This is yeah. law enforcement, right? And that's a big, big umbrella mm-hmm. of people who fit under that. Absolutely. So, what a DNR? I right? could argue that, yeah. Because you try to take my fish away, I bet I get placed in a chokehold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on the yeah. DNR. I wanna... But I mean, it, theoretically, I mean, you're looking at that too. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, well, sure. What? What about you know, uh, people from Minnesota Pollution Control Agency? I. I do they not do any enforcement? I'm sure they do. Oh, they have to. Oh, they rely on yeah. others to do it for them. You've got park police. You've got transit police. Uh, you got tribal police. Yeah. Um, Are they exempt because they're their own nation or no? I don't know. I, uh, I mean, my guess is the tribes will implement a third yeah. of that. And, you know, they seem to follow suit but not. They don't have to. Yeah, and, they... and and what about corporations and security guards? Are they are corporations going to have to come under that kind of thing as well? Somebody's caught shoplifting. Personal and, security and, and too. Personal, and and the security guards going to have to bring a, a case manager in. I, Maybe. Maybe every mall is going to have to have uh, the not just have the mall cops, but they're right. going to have to have the the Dr. <laughs> Freud along with it. Sarah Olson. Yeah, but, All social worker. Yeah, it's yeah. it's possible. Ugh. I mean, because I mean, Variety. again, any of these things could result in these situations. Yeah, it didn't have to be in Minneapolis. It could have been with the sheriff's office. Mm-hmm. Could have been with um, highway patrol. It could have been tribal police. It, this could have happened. Somebody could have gone after. I mean, what if what if somebody goes after a, a movie star and security takes them mm-hmm. down? Right. Are they subject, which they're doing the job they were hired to do. Yeah. So are they subject to having a social worker come and mm-hmm. intervene and 
make sure that everybody was singing on the same a cappella. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the end game here, Andrew? Because, I mean, we see this. This is a statewide thing. They know that not every city and county is going to go get rid of their police force or defund their police. Minneapolis, very may, few. <laughs> Minneapolis may actually succeed in getting rid of their police entirely, which they're idiots if they do that. Uh, but this is a way for them to control what goes on in the rest of the state where it doesn't really seem there's a problem. But is that the end game, just getting this passed and getting some more control around this? Or like in Seattle where we see – uh, anarchists and communists setting up an autonomous zone where they've barricaded it off. They have their own armed guards. They've got they've got their own food. They say no police are allowed in here. And and they took over a, a, like six square blocks of the city. I don't know what the end game is, but I think I think it will stop when the left's in total control of it. You know, it's kind of like. Um, I don't know. Will it? <laughs> yeah, I do. Because or once is it going to progress further? You know, you look at in some places. You look at you know, I, of course, this is extreme. You look at at the Soviet Union. You look at China, and getting in control isn't enough. They they turn and they eat their own, and you've got the useless eaters, and you've got you know, all of all of that stuff where they enslave the whole population, no matter what you believe. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think, but I think we're I think we're not far from that. As weird as that sounds, I mean, I don't yeah. think we're that. When you stifle free speech, that's one of the first things that happens. I mean, the governor says he wants to debate. He isn't debating at all. No, I mean, he hasn't debated a thing that he's done. No, he doesn't want to debate. He wants to jam this down our throat. So, but and, and again, um, you know, and they're hiding behind, uh, you know, um, everybody's rightful outrage mm-hmm. at what happened, and people should be outraged and pissed off. Right. But that is not an excuse to do anything. No, I it's, mean that's kind of the last refuge of a coward, isn't it? I mean, yeah. to hide behind somebody else's outrage and to sure. secretly pass your own agenda. Yeah, I mean, I think that is a coward. Yeah. I mean, I think a guy like Jacob Fry, he defines cowardice. Let me give you a better example. He got hassled because he has come out saying he doesn't want to defund the police. Right. Which I was very shocked at. I support that, and I I commend him for that, and he has not bended on it. But when he was confronted out in public, he kowtowed and ran away. Well, they were... They had thousands of people yelling at him, go home, go home, But you know what? I would have come out, I would have said... You know what? I'm not doing a knee-jerk reaction. I'm fine having a conversation. You're all welcome to come to a council meeting, which you've probably never been to, mm-hmm. and discuss this. I'm open to reforms, but I am not going to, period. Yeah. I am, that's what a leader would have done. Mm-hmm. That's what Rudy Giuliani would have done. Yeah. Okay? Said, no, a mob is not going to intimidate me to do something. You are welcome to be part of the conversation if you'd like to be, but... We're not going to make decisions this way. Instead, right. it was, oh, it was, oh, get uh, out of we're, here. We're not a mob rule. He country, allowed him. That's what we're turning into. But that's the thing. If 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 the mob sees that you're going to cut and run mm-hmm. every time they tell you to shut up, which people tell me to shut up all the time and I never do, if if ah. that's what they see, you're going to see more of it, not less. Yes. Every time you apologize for something, they're going to take more. No, apologies are not accepted anymore. And push you further, and push you further, and push you further. They're looking for the apology because then they know that you've conceded to their point. Then they push you further. You apologize. They know you've conceded to their point. Yeah, it's they not push good you enough. Further. It's never good enough until they have transformed this country into what it was never intended to be. Yeah, but I mean that's just he's just unequal to this task. I mean it's just even though like I said I was surprised when he said that and I was very happy that mm-hmm. he did. But, you know, let's see what mm-hmm. happens ultimately. I just you know, I don't trust him, so you know, we don't know. These these reform, and I'll tell you what. Jay, because I'm so bad at prognosticating, mm-hmm. I'm going to prognosticate. Okay. I say three things. Obviously, the emergency powers get extended, and I'm going to say they get extended all the way through the election, I think. But, but they can't do that in one fell swoop. It's got to no. be every 30 days. be back on July 11th, I yeah. want to say it will be. Um, so I'm going to say that passes. I think the Republicans will vote against it in the Senate just because they can. Yeah. I think if it meant something, they, <laughs> I, I still think a couple would kowtow. Yeah, well, a couple um, would. 
I can think of yeah. a couple. And a couple kills it yeah. because it's a 35 to 32 uh, advantage for them. I'm going to say, even in this session, a bonding bill passes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to say, like you said, I think it's going to be way on the high side. I think there's going to be a lot of angry people uh, on the right after this. Yeah. And I'm going to make a prediction that some of this stuff, not all, yeah. but I'm going to say maybe a third of this stuff gets passed. Because here's what will happen. The House will pass one version. The mm-hmm. Senate will pass another. The Senate right. will kill probably the most radical stuff in there. Yep. But I bet they capitulate to some of it. They will. Whether it's Absolutely. training, whether it's... Because uh, we have to do something now. Right, we have to do we something. We've got a crisis. We've got to do it now. Yeah, and I, mean, that's, I think that's going to be the cover mm-hmm. for the, the ones who capitulate. So I think you're going to see some reform. I, I think you're going to have Democrats... Questioning some of this, though, I think questioning whether the state mm-hmm. should be doing this, especially the ones out in, you know, up in northeastern and Minnesota. Road. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think you're uh, going to have western, but yeah, yeah, but I, northeastern in got, southern too. I yeah. think, and, and Grand maybe even, and, yeah, yeah, maybe even some of the suburbs too. Just kind of like, whoa, you know, we don't have that issue here. Right, and, you're going to get out like Loretto and <laughs> uh, <laughs> down to Lakeville or something. Yeah. I mean, I think you're going to have a lot more skepticism than they think. So I think, but I do think some of the chokehold stuff, the, some of the training stuff, um, and I don't know how we can create all these programs with the $2.4 million deficit that we're going to have to yeah. tackle next year. So I don't, I don't know how that's going to work, <clears throat> but I, I still think that the, they're going to want to do something. Mm-hmm. And I think that something will be what I mentioned, but I don't think the more... Uh, far-reaching stuff, although January is another day and election results and all of that, and I think if certain people get more power, I think you could see all of this stuff yes. passing by next spring. So If, if the Republicans I think that's what, lose the Senate, it's done. But I think that's yeah. what they're maybe setting the stage for is like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, this is we got short-term goals. We're just not going to tell you what they are. Right. You know, so this is... Because they're going to have two years of unabated whatever they want if the yeah, Republicans it, lose the Senate. Right. And I think there's a good chance they will. And so, but I think it's the Republicans' own fault. That's well, my opinion, but... Um, anyhow, so that's my prediction, Jay. What do you think about those? Yeah, you're pretty right on, I think. I oh, mean, my I, I am pretty good at pro- prognosticating, usually. And, yeah, I uh, suck at it. And I can see all of that happening, yeah. All right. Ready to ready for a bonding bill? No. <laughs> no. But what do you want to bet? It would be like $1.8 billion and Republicans will consider it a victory. <laughs> Gazelle could be walking yeah. around talking about he cut, he cut the bonding bill. Boy. All right, Jay, it's come that time again uh, for the sign-off sermon. The Count of Monte Crisco, the master of disaster, the king of sting, the suffering of succotash. <laughs> we have the sign-off sermon. I'll come up with a new one next week. Yeah. I'll come you up promise. with a new description. We have the sign-off sermon, sermon hmm. from Pastor Jason Bradley. Oh, boy. Really? I gave you a new title. Oh, boy. Reverend Bradley. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, Minnesota. What what do we say? Hey, yeah, Andrew's <laughs> over here for... I'm going to maybe try and video this and see if we can put this part up. All uh, right. M- yeah. That was via request, actually, one oh. of our listeners. So okay. Be make, hell. Make it shareable. All right. So, we'll see. I don't know. It must have been good, desk. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm getting good feedback, so... All right, Minnesota, this is crazy. (laughs) It is insane what we are having to endure. And I don't like it. I know you don't like it. I know you feel helpless. And, And we're getting told that we are nothing but a bunch of racists if we don't want to go along with it. That's not the case. You know, and we're getting told that we don't have the right to be upset about what is happening because we have been in power for so long that we just need to sit and sit this one out. You just take what comes to you because this is an evening of the playing field. Is that really true? Do, 
really is 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 calling the police and having them respond because of my privilege. Listen, I come from a single family home. All right. I didn't get special breaks. I went to school. I studied hard. I'm still paying off college. Still. I don't have some, you know, lucrative dream job. I'm in the, I'm in the trenches, working hard every day to try and make something happen that I really dream of doing that that, that makes me excited inside. I have the same opportunity that anybody else has. And privilege hasn't gotten me to where I'm at because really I, I haven't arrived anywhere, but yet I'm told it's just because of my privilege. It is just because I'm white that I have enjoyed the kind of life that I have. Do you know what kind of life I have? Do you know what kind of life I grew up in? Do you know where I stand now? What my day-to-day is like? I don't think you do. And so you want to tell yourself that, you know, you're not generalizing, you're not stereotyping, but yet, you know, it's not really, I mean, I'm not saying that, that black people don't ever say that, but it's coming a lot from white people, liberal white people that think that they are better than everybody else. I've had enough of it. I've had enough of you liberal white people that want to tell me that I'm privileged. Maybe you are, and maybe you need to feel bad for the kind of life that you've lived, or maybe you just need to take the the fortunate things that have happened to you and do some good with it. And, And I don't mean tearing other people down. I don't mean hampering other people's success. You know what I mean? I mean by pouring back into your community, helping people with a hand up, not a hand out. Not, not by limiting the success of others and then just giving things to people because it makes you feel good. It's about helping people to succeed and do something in life. As I read at the beginning of this podcast, we are the outsiders. And no, not that book or movie from the 80s. I mean, we are the ones that we think differently. We wake up every day with a purpose. We wake up every day. And we believe in a country where if you try your hardest, you can succeed. And it doesn't matter if you're white, if you're black, if you're red, if you're brown, if you're, if you're Asian. It, 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 it doesn't matter who you are. It matters what's in here and how hard you work to achieve it. And to think that somebody else can ever hold you down... Let me speak to you right now. Nobody else can hold you down unless you let them. You know, and if somebody won't accept you and they say you're not good enough, but you're working hard and you know you are, go do it on your own. Go show them. Don't let somebody else tell you you can't do it. Go do it. There is no use in you sitting around and telling somebody that, oh, I've I'm oppressed. Nobody's let me play. Nobody's given me an in. You make your own ins. You make your own opportunities. You take advantage of your own opportunities every day. You work. You work. You work. You have a plan. You work it. You have a plan. You work it. Gary Vaynerchuk, the the really uh, popular and successful entrepreneur, says that the internet is the great equalizer because nobody knows and nobody cares what race you are. If you can't make it in this day and age, it's just because you haven't made it yet. And whether that's an issue with your work ethic, your education, or just you haven't caught your break yet, You just got to keep working. That's all it is. White privilege. Maybe some people out in Hollywood have white privilege, black privilege, you know, making millions of dollars a year on a, on a sports team or because they, they performed a song somebody else wrote and, and sold 
a million copies of it. Maybe, just maybe, there's some privilege that comes along with that. And maybe that's why they're so out of touch with what really happens with everyday lives of normal, ordinary people. They're willing to throw around money to, you know, like, like we're some sort of project. Like, oh, let's take away from this group. Let's add to this group. Let's see if we can make these people rise up in society versus these people rise up in society. The people that make the most of what they've been given are the ones who will rise because that is the system that we have. And if you don't think for one moment that if we accept socialism in this country, that our lives are going to be any better, well, they make it seem real attractive at first, but it's temporary. Believe you me. Believe you me. It does not take long to go from, oh, everybody's boat is being floated to, yeah, the people that aren't working, we got to eliminate them. It's not a very far stretch once you go down that road. Oh, you know what? My roads never happened in Sweden or Norway. Well, they're not socialist countries. They tried that, and they got out. They were socialists back in the 70s, and it didn't work. So now they're just capitalist countries with really huge welfare programs. But we're trying to go further than that. We're not even trying to do that. We want to surpass that. And let me tell you, there's only heartbreak down that road. We were given an opportunity. We were given a God-given opportunity to take freedom that had never been granted to the world before. And to be able to determine our own lives, our own path in life, our own futures by how hard we work and the determination that it takes to get there. Anything that you want to do under the sun, and you can do it. So, what's holding you back? It's not Whitey. It might be Mr. Whitey Liberal, Ms. Whitey Liberal, that, that wants to regulate, that wants to keep you from being successful, that wants to tax what you earn, so it can be given to somebody else. But it's, it, it's not a conservative. I'll tell you that. I mean, granted, it might be a Republican who is afraid to stand up and do something. But it's not the everyday conservative that wants to see you succeed. Heck, that probably would be more than happy to help you succeed if you have questions about how to get into a certain profession. If, if you wanted to be able to to just shadow somebody and it I know and I know enough of these type of people that we love to share what we've learned not that we're all that great or have achieved I'm still learning I'm still trying to get better I'm still trying to realize my dreams and I, I hope that, you know, if I was willing to extend that for somebody to help train them up below me, that somebody above me might be willing to do that for me. Because, again, I haven't lived a privileged life. I've just tried to apply myself and work really hard. But this is what's coming to our country. This is what's coming soon if we don't change it. So the only way to do that is to take back our cities, to take back our counties, to take back our schools, to take back our soil and water conservation districts, our sheriffs, our county attorneys, and to be able to do this in a way that is going to bring about freedom for everyone. Because I'll tell you, in most places in Minnesota, you don't have these problems with police overexerting themselves. But they're going to make it so that lawlessness is more able to succeed. That lawlessness is more able to reproduce and look attractive. That's not what we need here. We need you. We need you at the city, at the state, at the school, in your county, in your home, in your church, in your community. Standing up and doing what's right. So if you see these things happening 
where you live. Get a hold of us. Do that at commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. That's commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. And let us know because we'll talk about it. We will out what is happening where you live. Because they're only successful when they're able to operate under cover of dark. And we're not going to let that happen. So, what you going to do? The time of decision is upon you. It is. Me, I've decided I can't do anything different. This guy over here, Andrew, oh, oh, yeah. he's decided. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I just... No. I was so enthralled by your by your yes. words of wisdom that yes. it just overtook me. There. He's decided. What We've I, given what our. What did I decide? Orders. We're not putting up with this, and we're, and we are working to make oh, sure no question. that Minnesota is free. Oh, okay. I'll agree then. All right. But we can only do so much. So hopefully you share this and tell people about it so that they can learn. But after that, you got to put your hand to the plow, and you got to make it happen. We love you, Minnesota, but now it's your turn. I get to come.